What's up, Internet? Uh, today, I am going to make some buffalo wings. Very exciting. Um, I'm going to make them sous vide. I'm going to do that thing, surprisingly. Um, you've all had a dry, crappy chicken wing before, and they're terrible. So I'm going to try to completely eliminate the possibility of that happening. Uh, by cooking sous vide. So what I'm going to do is cook these first uh, at 160 degrees for two hours. They're uh, they're leg meat. There's a lot of uh, connective tissue in them and all that. So I think the extra temperature there will be good. Uh, but anyway, after I'm done with the 160 degrees for two hours, I am going to um, basically uh, put them in a flour in spice mixture, uh, get them nice and seasoned, and then I'm just going to deep fry them. And the cool thing about this is you don't have to deep fry them for a super long time. Uh, all you have to do is just get the outside uh, skin crispy, and then they're done. So that typically takes only about two or three minutes instead of the typical, I don't know, 10, 12, however long it takes to completely cook the chicken wings. So first thing first, uh, get your water bath up to 160 degrees. And that sometimes takes a while. Uh, but actually, I was recently um, gifted a very cool um, system. So let's take a look over here. Uh, we got basically an all-in-one insulation uh, bath combination here. And also it's got a nice uh, you know, hinged lid on there. And this um, this uh, insulation here really really does a nice job of keeping things warm, uh, reducing the amount of electricity needed. Uh, it keeps the things so hot. I made some vegetables in this the other day at 185 degrees, and I left my Anova on, you know, not running, and it had the temperature sensor in there. It took almost two days for the water to get back to room temperature, which was pretty incredible. Uh, so it does a pretty good job of insulating there. It's also got a nice little hole here in the top for your, uh, for your machine, and that'll fit most of Nova's. You, know, you just stick it on the back of your bucket like a normal thing, like a normal old, uh, any, any old thing will work. Uh, there's a Velcro strap here in the back. So you wrap this around, and it, uh, you know, it's removable. I'm not going to remove it right now. But, uh, and there's also one underneath there too. Uh, so you put it on there and you know, all the heat doesn't seep into your countertop and absorb that energy. So, pretty cool. Um, I'll, I'll have a link for it on my video description, but uh, it's from perfectsousvide.com. I believe there's a dash in the middle of perfect and sous vide. So I will, uh, I will have the link there for that. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, it comes with a rack as well, which I'll show you in a little bit. But uh, overall, I kind of like this thing. It's, it's really big, but um, other than that, it, it works really, really well. So back to the chicken. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is salt this meat. Just salt only for now. Uh, basically what we're going to do when we are done cooking it is we're going to put it in a flour and spice mixture and that's where a lot of the other, the other flavor is going to come from. So just for now, we're going to break these up and salt them generously. You could kind of do like a dry brining. Um, I was thinking about doing a wet brine for these, but it might be kind of overkill. So um, I'm hungry now. So anyway, I'm going to get these going. I'm going to get the salt on these. And uh, then I'm going to get these vacuum bags. I'm going to break them up into maybe two or three separate bags so I don't have any issues. Okay, so we're going to generously coat these in some salt. Basically have, have quite a bit on there. I mean, it's going to season them nicely. There's a lot of uh, salt, obviously, in the buffalo sauce, which I'm going to show you how to make my version of it. I think it's pretty freaking good. Uh, you'll see that later in the video. Next step. We're going to put these in a vacuum bag or two. Okay, we're all sealed up. I did 12 wings in each bag. And these are just the drumettes. I didn't get any flats because I didn't have any. But, uh, yeah. So, let's get this in the bath. 
In we go. So this uh, thing I got also came with like a IKEA adjustable dish rack, which is nice for you know I I, I know I'm not using it properly here, but one way I like to use it is just to hold it across. So you bridge it across, and that way it holds the the stuff down, uh, and, and you know it does a pretty good job of that. Okay, so we're about 30 to 40 minutes before our two hours of cooking is up. So at this point what we're going to want to do is uh, make our flour. Uh, flour, whatever you call it, seasoning for the, uh, for the chicken wings. And also after that make your, start working on uh, making your buffalo sauce. So first let's do the uh, easy part that is uh, making the flour stuff. So. I got a little under half a cup of flour. I put two teaspoons of uh, cornstarch in there. This will make the uh, wings crisp up quicker, which is kind of the goal of what we want to do since these are already going to be cooked. Uh, some garlic powder, some Mexican chili powder, some black pepper, some white pepper, some smoked paprika, onion powder, and cayenne pepper. Just make it nice and seasoned, you know. You don't really want it to be overwhelmingly, uh, you know, flour in there because you won't be able to taste anything. So, I'm going to go ahead and mix these up into a uh, into a bowl and uh, just kind of whisk them around, get it all mixed up together. And then when I take the chicken wings out, I'm just going to uh, put them in there, shake them around, get them all coated up, and then get them ready for the deep fry. Okay, this is what it looks like when you're all done. Kind of has a pinkish hue to it, uh, which goes to show there's a lot of nice red spices within the flour. So anyway, that's that. Okay, now on to the uh, buffalo sauce step, which is not as hard as you think. Uh, the base of the sauce is basically Frank's Red Hot and butter. That's pretty much all you really need uh, to make this. So I like to make it a little more hot sauce to butter. Some people do 50-50 mix, but anyway, this is one stick or one half a cup of butter and uh, just put it in a small saucepan. Uh, in addition to that, one half cup of butter, I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of Frank's Red Hot. So you just dump it on in. There we go. Uh, in addition to those things, I like to add you know, like a heaping teaspoon of brown sugar, a little dash of garlic powder, don't really have much left anyway, but just a little bit of that. And some Mexican chili powder. I like to add some of that as well. Gives it kind of a different different flavor. And I also have this green Tabasco. It's a jalapeno flavor. I like to throw that in there as well. Don't have to. You can use any hot sauce you want. You can just use the Franks and the butter if you want, but I like to dress it up a little bit. So that's pretty much it, and what you want to do now is just put this on your stovetop at low heat and uh, just keep stirring it until it uh, combines nicely together. Okay, uh, it's been about two hours. Take your chicken out of the bath and, you know, looks good. Looks very nicely done. Feels firm but tender. So what we want to do next is dry these off. Basically, if you leave of all the juice on them, when you put your uh, chicken in the flour mixture, it's going to get all clumpy. So we don't really want to have that thick of a flour layer anyway, so we're just going to dry these off with a paper towel. Okay, we're all dried off, so let's go ahead and uh, dump these in. So yeah, put about half of them in and just shake them up in a bowl like this. That's all you got to do. Once they're all coated, put them on your tray. That's it. Okay, this uh, fryer will hold about a dozen. So I'm just going to do two batches here. But anyway, I'm going to drop it in. I've got it at maximum temperature, which is 375 degrees. I'm going to cook it for three minutes at the most. Just basically wait until the, uh, 
the skin gets nice and crispy. So here we go. Okay, three minutes is up. Take these out. They look good, nice and crispy. I'll let those rest there for a moment while I uh, put them on a paper towel plate and we'll wait for my uh, oil to heat up again as well. A little. Okay, the frying's all done. Do those look great or what? Beautiful. Beautiful looking wings. They're gonna look even better with my uh, buffalo sauce on them. Okay, so we're all done with that step. The last thing to do is to apply the buffalo sauce, which is one of the easiest things ever. So I'm gonna do about half of these in the bowl. Um, here's our sauce. If it separates, just grab a whisk and briskly whisk it. Um, that will get it back, you know, get some air bubbles in there, get the butter and hot sauce mixture going. Mine separated a little bit while I was outside frying. So that might happen to you. Don't freak out. It's not the end of the world. So I'm going to put about one half of the sauce in here. It's about half. And I'm going to put half the wings in there. Put your wings in there and really all you got to do is just kind of Lop them around, toss them, and when they're coated, like so, they're all done. Okay, there we go. We have our final uh, presentation here. Smells incredible. Tastes good. Um, not as crispy on the outside as I would have liked, but. The sauce is really good, and the chicken is extremely tender, good flavor. But uh, maybe my fryer didn't get hot enough. I don't know, but they're not super crunchy, but they're cooked very well. So, would I do this again? Eh, maybe. Would I just regular fry them in 10 minutes? Yeah, maybe. I tell you, none of these are screwed up and too overdone. But, uh, I don't know. I probably wouldn't put in the amount of time for these again. But thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in any of the equipment I use today, there's uh, a link. There's, well, actually, there's quite a few links in the video description. So just hit the show more button. Uh, if you like the video, like it. If you don't, you know what to do. So thanks again for watching, and I will uh, see you guys soon.